Hello, welcome and kumusta. Thank you for joining me. My name is Hao. I am your occupational therapist. And in these episodes, what I have been doing is I have been pulling out little strips of topic from my wonderful bag. And there's lots of topics in here, particularly topics involving neurology and stroke. And so honest to God, this is really, this is an unrehearsed video and uh, we'll see. I'm pulling one out now and it says, Whew. constraint induced movement therapy. Ooh, what is that? So constraint induced movement therapy. This is very recent. I think it'll be in the year 2000s or so. And what it is very simple. What you do is for somebody who's had a stroke, what you do is you constrain the good side, the good hand. And when you constrain the good hand, then you stimulate the person. You allow the person to move the affected side. Very straightforward and very simple, isn't it? So how does this work? There's been a study about the penumbra. Have you heard of that penumbra? And what it is, the it is, they're saying that once somebody has had a stroke, there usually is a swelling around the brain. And after a while, the inflammation subsides, but that part around the injured part of the brain, those parts that have swollen have not been used. And that's called the penumbra. And that is the one thing that needed to be stimulated. So there, these are areas that you can stimulate. And you can stimulate it using constraint-induced movement therapy. And it's basically just do it. Just move it. It involves an element of frustration. And when the person's hand is tied up and secured and they need to do something, they will force themselves to do it. So there are a few things that needs to happen when you do this and who are the people that are suitable. First, people needed to be cognitively competent. They need to be cognitively, they need to be aware. Cognition needs to be intact. Yeah, because you're going to be doing some instruction. The other thing they are suggesting that you need to observe an element of finger extension particularly of the index finger. And that is one of the prognosticating factor for a movement of the finger. So that would be a prognosticating factor when you move the finger and you can see an extension. So there is a potential for the arm to recover better, right? So that's that. And the other thing that you keep an eye on, again, it's a prognosticating factor. Arm abduction is one and two-point discrimination. But for constraint-induced movement therapy, person needs to be cognitively intact. They, there has to be a finger extension or partial hand opening. And the person needs to be safe with their mobility. And the classic one is to use the arm all the time throughout the day. Imagine that throughout the day that you'll be using the arm when you're doing something, it's really proper boot camp. So you're using the arm and there are some terms like shaping, meaning you do it. You just grab things over and over. If I'm getting something, there's there like, like beads, for example, get the person to pick it up and move from one to another, from one to another. And you can see that there'd be some movement on the shoulder. There'd be some movement, associated movement on the shoulder when you're doing this, but that is okay. It's not like boba and other techniques, the classic ones where the movement needs to be done in a refined way. So this is just rock and roll. Just do it. Give the hand some boot camp because the hand will move after a while. And yeah, that's very simple, really. That's a constraint induced movement therapy. Now, there are other forms of this that they will do it for people and do it for a certain number of hours only rather than the classic one where it's throughout the entire day or 90% of the waking hours. So that's that. And then there is also a constraint induced movement therapy for children, but they haven't had a stroke, but they have cerebral palsy and it's been proven to be very effective. 
particularly if you give them something like a toy that they reach onto, so they will do it. So there you go. I wish I could make it even more exciting and I wish I could make it longer, but really, no, it's just that simple. Constraint induced movement therapy, CT. And yeah, just carry on doing it, right? I hope you learned a little something today. If you want to learn more, just go. The, all the information is out there, okay? Pass this, share this. Just remember anything you do matters and has an outcome. Until next time, bye. If you enjoyed this podcast, talk to your friends and colleagues about it. Like it, subscribe, share, and do what you can to appease whatever algorithm that is at play. Just remember, guys, anything you do matters and has an outcome. Until next time, bye.